So Nisha, what's your favourite superhero with the suffix man in their name? Oh, Spider-Man is probably one of my top, like my top favourite superheroes. But I also like Iron Man as well. He's cool. There we go. Spider-Iron Man. Done. Spider-Man is by far one of the world's most recognisable heroes, but have you ever stopped to wonder how a character who is near universally portrayed as being a teenager in high school has the name Spider-Man? Well, as it turns out, that has a lot to do with Stan Lee taking absolutely no shit on behalf of the hero. All right, Carl, so what is the story here? Uh, well, the story is that in the 1960s, following the release and stratospheric success of the Fantastic Four, Stan Lee was tasked with creating something equally as successful, which was no easy feat because they were basically telling him, look, um, make the most successful popular thing we've ever done. Again, you've got a week. And what Stan Lee did is he went away and he looked at all the numbers and figures for the sales of their comics and realized that um, the largest growing market for the medium of comic books as a whole was teenagers. He looked at Marvel's roster of heroes and noticed that there was not a single character on it with which this new growing audience could relate. So I'm guessing that's where Spider-Man came from. Yes, um, Stan Lee's idea was a teenage superhero who had all the quirks, foibles and hardships of the average American teenager. So they would have someone to relate to. And he took this idea to his editor who promptly shit over almost every aspect of the design, right down to the very concept of the character itself, uh, that being a teenager with spider powers, simply telling Stan Lee that nobody likes spiders. <laughs> uh, which is true, but I'd argue a lot of people like Spider-Man. I hate spiders with a passion. Same. And I love Spider-Man. <laughs> so, you know, they're wrong in that sense. You know, it's a guy who saves, he saves the world, so. Yeah. Everyone's going to love him. Not to mention as well, he's so far removed from like, you know, the concept of a spider. It's yeah. like Wolverine. He's not really a Wolverine we talked <laughs> about in another video, where yeah. Hugh Jackman thought he was some kind of weird wolf man. And he's like, <laughs> no, the name is just like, you know, an allusion to his powers. Like, you know, he's short, stocky, squat and feral, like a Wolverine. Like Spider-Man, like, mm -hmm. he has spider powers, but he's not like, you know, a walking human spider, except <laughs> in that one terrifying moment in the 90s cartoon where he turns into a man spider. Please, you know what, people will be scared of that hero, but Spider-Man, he's, he's awesome, everyone loves Spider-Man, but uh, um, not Marvel's editor at the time who told Stanley to scrap the idea entirely. But Stanley refused to relent and argued with his editor that readers didn't want stories about infallible, nigh godlike beings because you can't relate to them. Um, whereas a character like Spider-Man, who had the same struggles that they do, would be inherently a more interesting character, which, yeah, absolutely 100%. I empathise and relate way more to a character like Spider-Man than I do to Batman. And I believe the best way I've heard it put is by Lucas, who appears occasionally on the channel. He's probably mad that he's not in this video. He says, that, yeah, like, Iron Man and Batman, they struggle, but they struggle in such unrelatable ways because they're billionaires. But Spider-Man has such human problems because me and him are currently doing a playthrough of the PS4 Spider-Man game. And yeah. One of the missions in that is Spider-Man gets evicted. Oh, Spider says he warned you about that, did it, dickhead? Like, he's got, he, he can't pay his rent and he gets evicted, oh. and you have to take a detour from the main storyline because Spider Man's belongings have all been thrown in the garbage. And it's like, oh, oh no, Spider Man! Oh, God, no! Oh, not over a cup, but he's got a water in it. Oh, do you know what? I can imagine Spider Man doing that. Yeah. Oh, that's a very human thing to happen. And a great quote from Stanley that was originally about the Fantastic Four, what can be applied to many of the heroes he had hand in creating, is that I wanted to show that um, inside the superhero costume were feet of clay. Like, they are human. Yeah. Like, they have these fantastical, amazing powers, but at the end of the day, they are human. They have human struggles. And despite that being one of the guiding ethos of the Fantastic Four, the most popular comic Marvel had at the time, they shit all over Spider-Man. And eventually... Uh, after Stanley would not shut the fuck up about it, and uh, they told him, look, you can write your Spider-Man story, but you have to write it in an issue of amazing fantasy. And that name probably sounds familiar to a lot of people because that is the, the iconic 
first ever image of Spider-Man on the cover of Amazing Fantasy. And the story here is that Amazing Fantasy was going to be shit canned the very next week. And he was very sneaky about this because he made sure that the story ended on a cliffhanger, even though he knew that another issue of Amazing Fantasy wasn't going to be made. And what happened was like a couple of months later, Marvel got their um, uh, figures for that quarter and looked and saw, oh wow, Amazing Fantasy, the final issue we ever published, um, sold more copies than every comic we released um, since that time combined. Maybe there's something about this Spider-Man character people like. Okay, so where does man come in? Well, here's the thing, because um, Stan Lee was, he had Spider-Man back from the very get-go, and when he was envisioning the character, um, he at first thought, well, if he's a teenage character, maybe Spider-Lad or Spider-Boy would work <laughs> spider better. Spider-Lad? Yeah, and he thought, well, that's what they do in other comics. When you have the teenage psychic, that you always have, like, Aqualad <laughs> or something like that. And he thought, I don't want that. Spider-Man is a hero. He deserves the suffix man. And his argument was, I don't want people to assume that Spider-Man is lesser than heroes such as Batman and Superman by calling him Spider-Boy or Spider-Lad. It's like, no, he saves people. He deserves the respect that these other heroes get. And <laughs> it was a quite... Take... Spider -Lad. Okay, I can't take Spider-Lad seriously. <laughs> you can't, can you? He's, he's Spider-Man. Like, Lee was very smart to make that decision. Another decision that was shit on um, from a very great height was the idea to have Spider-Man completely cover his face, um, which wasn't the done thing at the time. It's like... Why would people read a comic about a hero when you don't know what he looks like? And today that sounds stupid. It's like, well, why would a hero show people what they look like? But no, you want their face on the cover. People want to relate to this character. How are we supposed to do that if we don't know what they look like? And despite the initial criticisms of that choice, the decision to make Spider-Man wear a mask really did help um, uh, like establish the character because um, like the character is a teenager. And if he's wearing a mask, that completely covers his face. And when he's in the mask, he looks like a completely different person. And it helps just create that start divide between the nerdy, um, downtrodden Peter Parker and his fantastical alter ego, Spider-Man. People would immediately think lesser of him just because of his age. And you have that in a couple of Spider-Man movies, like the Raimi movies, mm. Spider-Man 2. Like when yeah. they have a 25-year-old like Tobey Maguire. So they're like, <laughs> he's just a kid. It's like, yeah. I mm. get what you're going for, but Tobey Maguire is definitely not a fucking kid in that movie. He's just a kid. And all of them are son. He does not like a teenager, whereas Tom Holland. Tom Holland definitely does. But the point's still there of, like, he's so young and he's doing all of this. And, like, they can't believe it. Because no one's going to think that underneath the mask of this guy who's swinging around the city and fighting crime and lifting city buses is this nerdy teenager. And I like how the suffix man plays into the uh, insecurity of Spider-Man, uh, which uh, the aforementioned Tom Holland does very well, where uh, you have Tony Stark asking him, so who are you? He's like, I'm, I'm Spider-Man. And he doesn't like saying it. He, he feels embarrassed to say, I am Spider-Man. You're the spider-ling, crime-fighting spider. You're Spider-Boy? Spider-Man. Not in that onesie, you're not. And it wasn't lost on me that he's saying that across from a guy who one of his most famous lines is proudly proclaiming, I am Iron Man to the world's media. It's like, oh God, I love um, when Spider-Man finds his confidence, like uh, the bit in um, Homecoming, where he looks into like the reflection of himself and sees like half the mask and he's like, I'm Spider-Man. It's like, you can do it, Spider-Man. It's like, yeah, <laughs> oh, he's yeah. got confidence. <laughs> he's getting confidence in himself. Come on, Spider-Man. Come on, Spider-Man. Come on, Spider-Man. Come on, and he's just such a relatable hero. He's struggling with this like great weight and the expectations of the world. Uh, in that scene, literally on his shoulders, it's like, fuck that editor. is like, people don't want a character like this. It's like, no, we do. We love characters like that. People love seeing um, the humanity in the characters that, they're, that they enjoy reading about or watching on their screens. Mm -hmm. And Stan Lee knew that. And that's why he's called Spider-Man. Something that... I thought of when you said, you know, he's just human. Yes. He's got his own struggles. It reminded me of in, in Endgame when Thor was struggling yes. for the past five years with like guilt and trauma of Thanos. And, and you know, he was depressed. That's very human. Yeah, I really like that as well. And it goes hand in hand with what we've been discussing today, which is um, heroes 
when they're invincible are boring. They're more they're way more interesting when they are human. They can still be powerful, yeah. but like being powerful doesn't necessarily mean they don't have weaknesses or like, you know, moments of self doubt. And um, something that happened behind the scenes with Chris Hemsworth that I uh, found out about after that and I really appreciate is that he pushed um, for Thor to stay fat. Yeah. Uh, because the original idea was when he reclaims his confidence and becomes Thor again for the climactic final scene where he calls down the lightning and gets his costume on, uh, the idea was for him to become thin again and become buff Thor. And Chris Hemsworth went, I don't like that idea because I don't like the idea that he can't be a hero while being overweight. Yeah. Recovering from something like this isn't something that happens in an instant. Yeah, definitely. And it's cheap to show that it is. It's like, oh, that's, that's like just... <laughs> Such a subtle thing, but it really does make the character more likable. So I, I thought when I watched it, I was like, is he just going to mm-hmm. get buff again? Is that, are they going to do that? And then he didn't. And I was like, that's really good that he stayed like that. Because it's like you said, it's not something you can change quickly. Like yeah, and I'm overnight. Presuming. It's, you know, he's been struggling for five years. And he's still going to have to like work that out. And he even mentions that at the end of the film when he talks about, yeah, I, I'm, I'm feeling better in myself, but there's a, I need to undertake a journey to find myself again. Yeah. And when he hands off um, uh, like, you know, the crown of Asgard to Valkyrie, and that was something Chris Hemsworth pushed for because he understood the idea that characters are more interesting when they are human, even if they have um, impossible godlike powers. And it's, uh, like one, it's one of those things that I just get really disappointed about that the Superman movies, that there are very few Superman movies that show him being human. Mm. Um, because something they often talk about in the comics, at least, is that um, Superman, despite being the most powerful hero in the world, is arguably the most human of all of them. There's this great quote from Batman about it, where he talks about when you see him flying around, firing lasers from his eyes, lifting buildings, flying through mountains, it's hard not to think of him as a god, but then you talk to him and realise that he is just a man trying his best. Yeah. And they seem to ignore that idea and favour him just lasering buildings in half. <laughs> so I guess that's cool too, but it would be nice if there was any depth whatsoever to this character. <laughs> uh, last night, actually, I was watching The Incredibles 2. Okay. And then you see Bob, who's he becomes a stay-at-home dad. Yes. And it's just the struggles of looking after three kids really takes its toll on him. You think, oh, you know, he's just human. I mean, he's really yep. strong, but he is a human. And he might be strong in one specific way, but he's not in this one. And to see him struggle makes you empathise with him. And they have that in the first Incredibles where um, he finds it really hard to come to terms with the idea that I, I was this great, amazing hero. I can lift buildings, but I can't look after my family. And you see him just depressed and sad that he's lost his way and that he's overweight. Yeah. And it's only when he finds purpose again that he's able to like you know exercise and get himself back to being Mr. Incredible. And then you have the moment later in the film where he realises that, oh, being a hero doesn't matter to me as much as my family does. Yeah. And he goes back to the, like, the previous state of like, you know, just depression when he thinks his family's gone. And he's like, yeah. oh, no. But wouldn't it be better if he just fired lasers from his eyes and levelled 80 buildings in a shitty CGI fight? No. No, no, it's not. 